Welcome to the Key Stage 3 Home Learning Pack. This pack is around magic. The Home Learning Pack covers the nine subject areas of English, Maths, Personal Social Health Education, PSHE, Independence, Understanding the World, Science, Creative Arts, Technology and Physical Development. Each lesson has a very similar format. There will be a lesson number at the top, this is closely followed by the equipment. This includes the things that you will need to complete the lesson, such as worksheets, pens, pencils, scissors, glue, ruler. There'll be a set of instructions related to the lesson. This will give you an, the outcomes and what the lesson is about. There will also be, within each of the packs and each of the lessons, examples to um, support your child in terms of their learning. Then each lesson will be broken down into activities, activity one, two and activity three. Activity one often is the easiest activities and every child should be able to complete these. Activity two is about the application of skills and knowledge and your child may need some support with this. Activity three is more independent work where children are applying their knowledge and skills to different environments and contexts. Within the English pack, across the eight lessons, we would like you to read about it and answer questions about the witches and also about Macbeth, create spells and work on rhyming words and similes, and describe a witch and work on your punctuation. In the first English lesson, we'll be reading about witches, and then you'll need to complete some comprehension questions about what you have read, so please pay attention. In the second lesson, we'll be looking at adverbs of time, so these are things such as before, eventually, when, yet, still, next, and how we use those in writing. And then we're looking at imperatives, which are really about bossy word verbs, such as shut, mix, add, and stir. And then we'll be combining these together to make our own witches ones. In lesson three, you'll be looking at a very famous play by William Shakespeare called Macbeth. Be reading some key scenes from within the story and then sequencing them in order and looking at some key characters. In lesson four, you'll be looking at rhyming words. And in here, you can see a very famous part of the, the spell by the witches, which is double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble, fill it of a fenny snake in the cauldron, boil and bake. You can see here the rhyming words are trouble with bubble and snake and bake. There'll be opportunities to develop your own spell and your own rhymes. In lesson five, we're going to be looking at similes. In this example, she was light as a feather. So this would mean that obviously we are comparing the fact that she doesn't weigh a lot in terms of she's light and a feather, which equally does not weigh a lot. So we're looking at two different objects which uh, when coming together help and define each other and then we'll be looking at a room on a broom and thinking about how we can use similes to describe the witch the broom and the cat in lesson six we'll be looking at adjectives um, in this example um, juicy is an adjective tina is angry is an adjective and something is scary so you can see that adjectives are describing words and then we'll be, once we've practiced our adjectives, we'll be looking at the witches from Macbeth and determining about how we can use adject adjectives to describe the witches from Macbeth. In the final two English lessons, we first of all want to look at some descriptive writing, using descriptive writing to actually describe characters such as witches and wizards. In the final lesson, we'll be looking at some stories and also a newspaper clipping from the Daily Prophet and then looking at how we can improve the punctuation that is within that Daily Prophet article. Across the eight math lessons, we would like you to work on capacity and weight, including reading scales, addition, including addition of coins, fractions and multiplication. Let's have a look at the maths pack in more detail. In lesson one, we're going to be looking at measuring capacity. Capacity is a measure of how much space something takes up. Initially, we're going to be looking at some describing aspects. So in this way, this context, um, the glass is full. There'll be some other experiments. So we start to use other terms such as nearly full, half full, nearly empty and empty. 
In lesson two, we're going to be specifically looking at measuring capacity and using scales. It's really important when we use scales that we look at, first of all, the marks on our scale, and we need to work out how much each of those marks is worth for us to be able to work out the capacity um, of the liquid that is in any container. In this one, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten lines from the from zero, and there is fifty. So to get to each line, you need to do fifty divided by ten, which equals five. So we now know that each of these lines is worth five. So this one is five, ten. 15. So we now can work out how much capacity um, the water is taking up. Lesson three and four, we're going to look at some basic addition. We're going to start looking at additions that everybody should be able to do. In this example here, two cauldrons, add seven broomsticks, gives us an answer of nine. We can use counters or we can use number lines to support us. In this example, uh, towards the end of the lesson, we'll be looking at more difficult additions. In this example here, we're going to be looking at magic numbers. So we look for a full line or a diagonal. In this, we've got three, add 11, add four. So our magic number is 18. We can then look at our next line where we've got a gap that we want to work out. In this example, we have 11 and 6. We don't know the next number, but we do know that our magic number is 18. So 11 and 6 gives us 17, so our answer is 1. We can work out whether that is right or not because we can look at the next complete number line below. So we have 8 add 1 is 9, add 9 also is 18. We therefore know that our square is correct because we have 18, which is our magic number. We can then work out our final two gaps. There are more examples within the worksheets that you can practice. We're then going to look at adding coins. In the first ones, we're just going to be looking at basically how, we, how many coins we need to add to a jar to get to a certain amount. In this example, we need to add two pennies to the jar to make two pence. At the end of the worksheet on coins in addition, we're going to be looking at more complex questions. In this, we need to work out how many pence there are initially. So there are 100 pence in every pound. So we have 100, we have 50, so that's 150. We add another 50, which gives us 200. And finally, we're adding 10. So we have 210 pence. However, we do need to work out what this would be in pounds and pence. So we need to be moving our decimal place, two lines, as we're dividing by 100. So we then have two pounds and 10 pence. There's more examples for you to try in the pack with the answers there to see if, how many of you got right. Have a go at marking them yourselves and seeing if you can put the corrections in place before you ask an adult. In lesson five, we're going to be looking at fractions. We'll be starting by looking at um, denominators and numerators. In this example here, we know that our circle is divided into four, which is our denominator, and we know we have three parts of it. So it goes at the top, so we know we have three quarters. We'll be then looking at how we look at fractions of numbers. In this case, we're looking at 12, and we would like to establish how much half of that is. We'll be starting by just using very basic counters, and using 12 counters, and then counting them into two paths, as we have two at the bottom. So in this case, we have six, which are highlighted here, um, and we know we have one of those aspects, so we, we know that the answer is six. We'll be working on that for additional questions as we go through the pack. 
In the next lesson, we're going to be looking at weight, in this case using grams. We're going to start again as we did with capacity and looking at scales. So there'll be an opportunity to read scales. In this example here, we know that we have 100 grams. And then as we progress through there, there'll be an opportunity to use scales in your home environment, but also to work out scales um, of certain objects. In this example here, we know that we have something that weighs 50 grams. There'll be opportunities to practice these within the worksheets. Again, I would encourage you to actually have a go at all of the questions and then have a look at the answers and then ask for handle help. Thank you. We spent a lot of the part looking at measuring, whether it could be capacity or whether it be weight. So in lesson seven, we're going to do a practical example of using both weight and capacity in, in baking and making um, something in the kitchen. So you'll need then to work on your, your skills. So in this pancake recipe, you'll need to be weighing 100 grams and you'll also then need to be finding 300 milliliters of milk. There's other measures as well, which comes into here, such as teaspoons um, and other forms of non-weight non measurements. The last lesson we'll be looking at multiplication. We'll be starting by looking at very basic multiplication. In this example here, we're looking at three times two. So that is no different than looking at two bricks and we have three lots of them. So we can use that method to find the fact that the answer is six. And then we can get more used to the fact of what that looks like in terms of the addition, but also the multiplication way. As we get more used to our multiplications, we'll be looking at wider ones in here. We've got a multiplication grid that actually on the worksheet will then mean that you will be looking at um, doing the multiplications and then working out what colour um, to colour this in and it will then reveal a particular picture. Welcome to the overall pack. The first two lessons are related to creative arts. In the first lesson we'd like you to listen to a piece of music. We're suggesting that this is Queen, it's kind of magic, but it could be any track that you have at home. Have a listen to the, to the words and see whether you can identify any of them. Write these down and then use any musical notes to create a music poster using the lyrics that you've heard. In the second lesson, we'll be creating our own instruments. This could be in here a box guitar or could be around shakers and rattles and then using those to join in with some music. In independence, we're going to start by doing some cooking and cooking some chocolate magic wands. We're also going to be considering appliances and things that we use within the, within the um, kitchen environment. In this example, it could be around how we store things effectively within fridges so that they're safe and which things need to be stored in fridges and which things can remain in the pantry. We're then going to do some magic tidying up within your bedroom and how we should clean our bedrooms correctly, including dusting and vacuuming. And finally, the power of the washing machine and how the washing machines um, and are, are to be used to ensure that we get our clothes nice and clean. Within science, we're first of all going to be making some magic potions and mixing at home bicarbonate of soda and vinegar. This creates a reaction releasing carbon dioxide, which means that the experiment foams and creates a potion. Then we're going to be using red cabbage to create initially a solution which we can then use to test the um, whether somebody is an acidic or a base. So as we add different substances to the to the red cabbage after we've boiled it and created the, our test kit, um, as it gets more acid it will become redder and as it becomes more base it will become bluer. So acids include things such as lemon juice um, and orange juice and you'll be able to try to, other things around the house to see what is acidic and in terms of bases this would be an alkaline this would be things like baking soda and also things like soapy water and bleach so you need to be careful with some of the substances that you're handling 
and also ask for some adult help. In understanding the world, we're going to start by looking at um, witchcraft and um, around the world. Not the witchcraft that you would see in movies such as Harry Potter, but more around um, cultural and religious beliefs. Then we're going to look backwards in terms of time, back to uh, King James I, who wrote a very famous book called The Witchfinder's Guide. This was a guide about identifying witches and what to do with them once you had found them, which resulted in, in many people being killed around the country for their beliefs. We're then going to look at modern day magicians such as Dynamo um, and how they're um, using illusions and what they are famous for. In PSHE, we're going to start by looking at some illusions that you can practice at home to fascinate your family members. We're then going to look at the differences initially between witches and wizards across the, so in this context, we have Dumbledore, who is wearing a hat, and obviously the witch is also wearing a hat as well. But you'll notice that Dumbledore has a wand and this witch does not. So we'll be looking at the differences between the two characters. We'll then be moving that into real life, where we'll be looking at the differences between you and other members of your family. Um, and looking at what makes us the same and what makes us different. And finally, we're going to be making some magic bottles, which we can shake and use to support us with some of our mindfulness and well-being. In physical development, we'll be looking at developing our magic tricks or our trick shots. In the first lessons, we'll be looking at football, then we'll be looking at rugby, and then we'll be looking at basketball. If you don't have any of these balls at home, don't worry, you just need to substitute an appropriate ball that you have at home to practice the shots. In the final technology lessons, we'll be back to looking at some craft ideas. We'll be looking at creating your own witch's hat and also creating a popcorn um, spooky hand, um, a bird in the cage illusion trick and finally a playing card trick. Um, these are all things that you can then practice at home and um, put on maybe a small magic show for your own family. There's other examples in there um, and links to other online tricks that you might want to try. Thank you for listening today. Please don't forget to take pictures of your work and to send them into school. You can use either email to do this or indeed Weeduck. Please also don't forget that each lesson is broken into a series of activities. Activities one and two tend to be able to be done more independently by students, where lesson three tend to be a lot harder and students may need your support to be able to undertake those activities successfully. Thank you.